Many people are struggling in life, looking for their identity, trying to understand who they are and what's their mission and what's the right path. A person asked me a few days ago on himself, trying to figure out things about his life. Okay, so which profession should I choose? What should I do? And what should I invest my powers? Which work? And it really hit me very, very strong that the main problem is that people don't listen to their inner voice. They choose to ignore their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions. We're not talking about a spiritual light, an inner illumination, something divine that it's... It is divine, it is spiritual, but it's installed inside of you. It's so close to you that you cannot imagine. You can't understand how close it is to you and there's nothing else to do except of just follow your heart. It's not far. We've been taught that because that it's the divine truth, so it's supposed to be so high, so far, so hard to get. That's the trick of the evil inclination. That's the Yetzirah. That's the joke. That he took something that was right under your nose and he told you that you'll never find it, and then from that moment and on, where is it? I need to look. Maybe it's in Monsi, maybe it's in, in Hawaii, in Maui. No, it's in your mouth, it's in your heart. You just need to keep it. You just need to keep your mouth and your heart in one place, and to say, what did you feel? And to be who that you are, and not to move to the sides, and not to start changing your ways, and, no, I need to change so much, and I want to be a Baal Tshuva, I need to come back to Hashem. Where is Hashem? Where is Hashem? V'asuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham. From the day that we built, and we did it already, it's behind us. We passed that. We built the Beit HaMikdash. V'asuli mikdash, from that day that they built the Mikdash, we built it. It's, we have it, it's in our pocket already. We built the first one, we built the second one. We build the Mishkan. We have it. It's ours. We don't need to do that again. The third one that will be rebuilt is, will, will, is, is the work of heaven. It's his job to do. We don't need to build Bet HaMikdash. And then the verse is saying, Hashem is telling us, from that moment that you built, you sacrificed already in your past, you built as a nation the Bet HaMikdash, from that day and on, I will live inside of you. Not inside Bet HaMikdash, inside of you. Betocham, lo betocho. It doesn't say betocho inside of it, inside of Bet HaMikdash. It's written betocham, inside of you, guys, inside of your hearts. Betocha mi anochi yoshevet. The Shekhinah is saying, inside of my nation, I'm, I'm in. That's where I spend my time, that's where I live. Inside of your heart. Inside of you. Even if you're in the most contaminated, impure places in the world, a place that we are not allowed to mention, not allowed to think, not allowed to... We're afraid to think about those places. But Hashem is telling you, but I'm there with you. Even if you go in the valley of death, even if you'll be in the lowest place of hell, in the lowest layer, under the sheets of hell, I'm with you. I'm not to be afraid because you're with me, King David is saying. Hashem is with you. Now why do you need to change if Hashem is with you? No, I want to keep Torah and Mitzvot. Great! But it doesn't mean that Hashem is not with you when you're not keeping Torah and Mitzvot. It all depends on the purity of your intention. A person that sinned all of his life and he will decide to come back to Hashem and he will decide that from now on he's coming back to Hashem. You already accepted. You've been accepted. Hashem is with you. 
The Gemara is saying that the person just regret on the Avonot, on one sin, on one mistake that he made, and he feels regret. He haven't even completed his tshuva. Mochalin lo al kol Avonotav. They're going to forgive him on all of his sins. If a person did tshuva, immediately is with Hashem. Immediately. Hashem in Barach is telling us, it's written in the Mishnah, that it's worthy for the person to live all of his life and to do tshuva one hour before of his death. On his deathbed, he's 97 years old, he's, he can't move, he can't go to, to the bathroom alone, he can't do anything, he doesn't have time to apologize to no one, he just feels regret, sorrow on how he wasted his life, and he did, he was. He destroyed his life, he destroyed his wife, he destroyed his children, he destroyed everything, and now he feels bad with himself, really. Not in a fake. He's not trying now to, to, to escape from punishment. He really feels bad with himself. He regrets now on his mistakes. For Hashem Barach, it's enough. For the loving kindness of the Creator, it's enough. If you really regret, if you really understand what did you did, what was so wrong, and you feel that shame, you feel that embarrassment. You feel so horrible with yourself. And now the only thing that you want to do is to fix. From that moment and on that you came to that understanding, that you came to that decision in your heart, that you came to that realization, I want to be a better person. I want to be like you want me to be. From that moment that you came to that thought, that's it. You already accepted it. You're again in between the arms of Hashem. You don't have no moment that you're away from Hashem except of those moments that your mind is distracted. When you think about something else, okay, so then you are not with Hashem. But Hashem, He never left you. And we must work on that to fight on that. Not to let our mind leave Hashem with Barach. Never, ever, not to give up. Like Rabbi Nachman of Boisev said, there is no despair in the world at all. Can you understand the power of that verse, of that sentence? There is no despair in the world at all. What does it mean? That if you're not going to give up, you will have it. What, everything? Yes, because there is no despair in the world at all. No, but hey, I want that huge castle. I want that palace for myself, for my own. I want those buildings in Manhattan. Yes. It's included inside that verse. Now the question is if you believe or you don't believe. If you don't believe, that's your tough luck, that's your problem. But me, that I'm crazy, sick in my mind, that I believe all the way, I'm going to have it. Why well, I'm going to have it? Because I'm not about to give up on my dreams. So I'm going to have them all. And like the Rabbi Nachman told us that story on the Viceroy that he's going and looking for the lost princess, the daughter of the king, and he's going and searching. 70 years of his life he's searching. And he heard from hell that she is hiding in that place that is on a mountain that made out of gold in a castle that built from, from rubies, from good stones. Okay, so he's looking for that place. And after 70 years, a mission of his life, going and traveling in the deserts, in the forest, and he's asking people and talking and searching and learning and falling asleep and failing and, and coming, standing up back on his feet and walking and, and restarting and, 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 and doing everything that he can. After 77 zero years of his life, he is finally finding himself in front of a huge righteous man. And then he's looking at that righteous man and he, that righteous man is telling him, what are you looking for? He says, I'm looking for the princess, the lost princess. He said, okay, and where is she? So he's telling him what that he heard from the lost princess 70 years ago, in the beginning of his, of his, his search. She's in, on a mountain, she's in the castle that made out of good stones, on a mountain that made out of gold. And that righteous man is looking at him. Tells him, that place does not exist in the world. And that righteous man, that Viceroy, starts to cry. And he tells him, no, I'm sure that it exists. And he ignores that righteous man. And he keeps on looking. After that, he saw 
in a clear way that he's he is he, he's, he's imagined to himself. He's dreaming. Here, a righteous man that knows all of the Torah, that learned all of the books, that he's already holy, that he's pure, and he's telling you 100% that place is not existing in the world. And he's not giving up. And he's going. And then he meets another righteous man that the, the, the Sipurim Masyot, Rabbeinu, is describing that righteous man as even higher than the first one. He's got the power to control all of the birds that fly in the sky, that he knows the nature of all the animals. And he's a huge personality. And he asks him, okay, what are you looking for? He says, the lost princess. She's in a castle that's made out of good stone, on a mountain that's made out of gold. He said, you're wasting your time. 70 years of my life. Yes, I'm sorry. That place you're never going to find. Complete wealth and happiness and success and, 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 and the dream of his life to bring back that lost princess back to her father. All of his life destroyed, now been crushed in two righteous people, that's it. Even if a third one will come and say, yes, there is, you have two against one, it's, it's lost. And he is saying, no, I believe her. She told me. And I'm going to find that place. I'm going to find her. I'm going to rescue the lost princess. And he keeps on going against the opinion of those two righteous people. That both of them are greater than angels. And then he goes and he meets a third one. That he is in charge of all of the spirits and all of the angels and all of the ghosts. Someone that is divine, that is beyond this world completely. Where is he and where are we? We don't control ourselves and he controls the, the spirits and the angels. We don't know the number of our shoes. And, and, and he is flying in the air. And he asks that Viceroy, what are you doing? Why are you seeking for? He says, I'm looking for the lost princess. Where is she? She is on the mountain that made out of gold and the castle that made out of good stone. He said, you're wasting your time. I'm sorry. That place, and listen to me, I know everything. I control the spirits. And you know the winds, the spirits, they're going everywhere. They're covering the world. They know. Here, I'll give you a proof, an evidence. I'll call all of the spirits. Casper came. Everyone came. And all of the Ghostbusters, everyone, they came, testified, standing, telling him, no, we're flying everywhere in four wings of the universe of the earth. We never saw that place. It's not exist in the world at all. And he said, and that was his test. And he said, but I'm sure that she's there. I'm sure. How, where you find that power? I tell you, you can find it only inside. Outside, it's not exist. Here, you have the proof. It's not exist outside. No one, even the righteous ones will tell you it's not exist. The hugest ones of them all that controls the angels, they will tell you it's not exist. Give up. Give up on your dreams. You must be medium, you must be low, you must be poor, you cannot finish your learning, you won't be holy, you won't be pure, you won't complete your aliyah, you won't have that family that you want to have, you won't buy that house that you want, you won't succeed, you won't know, you're not going to know all of the Torah, I'm sorry, you won't make it, you won't have your private mikveh, you won't do six hours in Vodadut, you're not going to be in Uman Rosh Hashanah. I'm sorry, it's not an option for you. That's what they're going to tell you. But you need to say, no, I'm sure that I will. How? I don't know. But inside I feel that I should, and that I shouldn't give up on my dreams. And then suddenly, after he said, I'm sure that it exists, that she is, that I'll find her, suddenly some impure spirit came. Wacht me'ak, not pure came suddenly and that righteous man was furious one moment ago he was righteous now he's upset he's all angry why that spirit didn't listen to him why you were late he's saying i'm sorry i had to take that lost princess to the mount to the castle that made out of good stones on a mountain that made out of gold okay so now it exists oh so that righteous man had to admit and to, to force that spirit to take the Viceroy to that place and to release her and to save her. And Abin Nachman is writing in the end of that tale that how he took her out 
I won't tell you. Why? Why he won't tell us? Why? Rabbeinu, have mercy on us. Let us know. We want to save our own princes. We want to save our souls from prison. Rabbi Nachman is telling you, you need to do it on your own. Like that he did it on his own. Like that Rabbeinu, like Rabbeinu is saying, I did it on my own. I did it my way. That's what Rabbeinu is telling us. He did it in his own way. And you need to do it on your unique way. You must find your true self. You cannot be me. I'll never be you. You have to be yourself. You want, you want to achieve it, you need to find it. We're inside. You can never imitate and copy another person and to be exactly similar to him. You cannot do that. It won't work to you, for you. No matter how many surgeries you're going to do to yourself, no matter how much effort you're going to try to wake up exactly in the same hour that he's waking up, to learn from exact same books, the same chapters, same volumes, same verses, and word by word you're going to say what the he says, you're going to listen, going to record his learning and going to say the same words in his prayers. You're going to go with him to the bathroom and say Asher Yatsar like he did. You won't achieve what that he achieved. Why? Because he was honest, he was himself, and you were not yourself, you were not honest, you were imitating him. So you were disconnected from your source of life, and you were just leeching yourself on someone else's back. You were like a cockroach, like, 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 like a, 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 a tick on, on, on his back. You were nothing. You not exist at all. Why? Because you're trying to copy. Because you're not choosing to get inside to your spiritual world, to find your true connection to the Creator, to believe that the Creator, He loves you. Not He loves me because the, the Rabbi said that He loves me. Okay, now I'm going to follow that Rabbi because that Rabbi, He told me that Hashem, He loves me. No, no. Take that lesson. Put it into your mind. Now after you realize that Hashem, He loves you, go with that. Hashem, He loves you. Hashem, He loves you. So now go with Hashem. If you learned in that class that Hashem, He loves you, now you can go with that class forever. Just go with Hashem. Don't walk away from that wisdom that Hashem taught you. I love you. I care about you. I'm with you. I'm never backing off from you. Don't give up. And even if it's getting harder and harder, don't back off. It can be so hard. It can be so, so crazy. You can lose your mind. So sit and be quiet and relax yourself and go and drink something cold and cheer your spirit a little bit up somehow and come back to yourself in one day, in two days, in a week, in three weeks, in a year from now. But don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your goals. Come back to the ring, come back to fight for another round, for another war, for another battle, for another test, for another try, for another opportunity to feel good with yourself by being who that you are, who that you dream to be. Not who the people told you that you should be and that you will be successful if you'll be. If you like to hold your guitar and to play, you must play. You must play. Rab Shlomo Karlibach is still making Baal Tshuva until today. He's buried in Arab Menuchot under a thick stone. And he's making Baal Tshuva with his guitar. His songs are still in every scene. I don't know if there are. Maybe. Maybe you can find in Lakewood synagogues that are not singing Karlibach. Maybe in Lakewood. Every place, everyone are singing Karlibach. We're probably also in Lakewood, they're singing Karlibach. Can you do tshuva without singing Karlibach? Can you do tshuva without hearing Karlibach? You cannot. It's impossible. He became part of the gates of tshuva today. Rabbi Nachman of Westlev. Someone can do tshuva without Rabbi Nachman of Westlev? Without having Rabbi Nachman of Westlev inside his life? No, you can't. If I've been in Lakewood and gave classes over there, so you, even in Lakewood, you teach Rabbi Nachman of Westlev. Lubavitcher Rebbe. Can someone do tshuva in this world without the Lubavitcher Rebbe? Someone, one person can do tshuva without the Rabbi Milubavitch? You cannot. 
No way in the world, no matter how wise you are, from which honorable family, legacy, it doesn't matter. You need words that will give life to your soul, to your spirit. You need fresh water. You need to, to chill your face. You need to, to, to revive your dead heart. So you must have Rabbi Nachman. You must have Karli Bach. You, know, you must have those tzaddikim inside. You, you, what can you do? They bought some parts of the tshuva of this generation and they're leading us and there's nothing we can do about it. So you need to find your own path. And if you have that energy with a guitar, you need to go with that guitar. And if Rabbi Nachman of Breslev had his thing of going alone to the forest to do long it bodeduyot, days on days, hours on hours, going alone to the fields and talking and crying and begging and praising Hashem and talking to him like you talk to your best friend since he was six years old, going to the forest, going, talking, without thinking, without planning. Realize that's the truth. Hashem is here. I'm obligated to talk to him. That's it. I'm going to do it from my heart. It's not time to fulfill his obligation, not to the supervisor of the yeshiva, and not to the chief rabbi, and not to the community, and not to his parents, and not to his father-in-law. He's running to, the, to Hashem. He's running to his, to his own self, to his, to his insights, to the soul of, uh, that is shining from inside, that is calling him. Because Hashem is calling everyone that calls Him with truth. Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. The only thing that you need to do if you really want to come closer to Hashem is to be truthful. It's to be loyal, to say the truth. And even if your truth now is to say to Hashem, all of my life I was faking, I was lying, I was pathetic. I was chasing after honor, I was chasing after my lust, after my desires. Even if that's your truth, that truth will bring you closer to Hashem. To say to Hashem, I'm a liar, Hashem, I just lied to you, to myself, to my friends, to my people, to my no matter who, to my rabbi. If you will say that, that is the confession that will bring you closer to Hashem. Without that confession, you cannot come closer to Hashem. You're going to try to fake the fact that you're not righteous. No, I'm righteous. No, you don't know. I'm Haredi. I'm Dati. I'm Hasidic. I'm waking up every morning. It... Stop with the games. You want to be rewarded on your hours? What do you want? Money? Okay, you'll get it. How much you need? 3,000, 7,000? It's okay, you're going to get it. It's better for you to go work high-tech or something, sell an electronic cigarettes or whatever, something interesting. Do, you know, travel the world, go buy merchandise from Thailand, China, come. Fake it. But to fake it and to say to other people that that's the right way, also to mislead other people that they will follow you. You want to lie to yourself, okay, great, no problem but also to force your children and your wife and all of your family to your lies. No, we must do this, we must do that. And I'm talking to you from my bleeding heart for my horrible mistakes that I did. That I took all of my family and I changed my life and I moved an apartment to a former community and I was just afraid. I was afraid to stick to my faith. If I would really believe that Hashem loves me, I wouldn't have to have no environment that will support me. I could be a, a, a lone runner to live alone like Tarazan in the, in the forest and, in the, and, and to be who that I was, who that I am. But my faith was not strong. And I wanted to have a rabbi and I wanted to have a community and I wanted to have support and I wanted, I wanted, I wanted because I felt weak. But I was acting like I was strong, so I lied. Now I'm strong, throw me to the deserts, throw me to the sea, I'm going to stay who that I am. I'm going to drown in the ocean, being who that I am. I'm going to dry in the desert, being who that I am. I'm not going to cheat, I'm not going to lie anymore, because I came to that understanding that I am who that I am, and I am who that I want to be. And that's where the story finished. And that's who you need to become, yourself, not me. And if you're too weak to decide to go to the desert, so stay in the city, so stay in the community, but be truthful to yourself. 
Don't stick to the community because it's the best community. No! It's a horrible community. It's a lousy community. It's a silly community. It's a stupid community. Fake people that are lying to themselves, to their wives, to their friends, to their colleagues. It's all fake. But it's okay for you for now. Okay, so stay here. It's okay. No problem. No one is dragging you. No one takes you out in force. People are lying to themselves. Okay. So just say the truth. What can I do? Someone is telling me, I'm not waking up in the morning because I'm lazy. I told him, you're lying. You're not waking up in the morning not because you're lazy. Not because it's too hard for you to wait. That's the worst lie even. Say, I'm lazy. Okay, maybe something makes me lazy. Too hard to wake up. No! Say the truth. I hate my life. I hate my mornings. I don't want to take my head off the pillow. I want to cover my head with the blank. I don't want to heal the world. I don't want to see the world. I don't want to wake up to another day. And that's why I choose to fall asleep again. And if I would have an opportunity to sleep for another hour, I would do it. And now say the truth, and it's okay. I tell you, if you will say that to Hashem, Hashem will ease the pain. Hashem will make your mornings different. But if you will keep on lying to yourself, everyone, oh, it's so hard, I don't know, I can't understand. No, I'm so lazy. You're creating a fake reality to yourself, and you're closing for yourself the gates for change. Because you put a sign on yourself, lazy. And now you cannot change. Say to Hashem, Hashem, I hate the mornings and I want to sleep later because I don't want to experience my days. Please, Hashem, help me. Make my mornings better. Make me fresher, happier person. Make me more positive. No, but I need to do things that I don't like. Okay, so deal with that, Hashem. Why do I have to work in that job, Hashem? Why I need to go and pray in that minyan? I don't like that minyan. That's why I'm not waking up. If it would be a real minyan with real people, not faking, not lying to themselves, if I would really feel closeness to Hashem, I would go. If I would feel that I'm able to express myself with that fila, I can hold the siddur for two hours and I don't feel no connection. So don't say, no, I don't really like it. No, my wife, she's not allowing. No, it's too long walk. If there was a million dollars over there, so you would run, right? You wouldn't ask your wife. You would come back with a million dollars telling her on the miracles, right? If you wouldn't tell her to pack her suitcases and leave. Say the truth. Be honest. Say who that you are. Say, I'm not enjoying. And now you want to change? You want to fix something in your life? So do that. Stop lying to yourself. Be honest. Say to Hashem in Baruch, I have a problem. I'm selfish. I'm lazy because I'm selfish. I don't want to deal. I don't want to deal with my problems. I'd rather to bury my head under the blankets, under the pillows, and not to wake up to another day of suffering. Why am I suffering? If I would know, today I gave that example to a friend of mine. He told me that it's very hard for him, he needs to work and stuff like that. I told him, listen, there are people, if you're going to tell him, hey, you need to lift that boulder, you need to lift that piece of iron, he would say, no, look, it's so hard. But then from the other side, you have crazy people, every day will go and work out for two hours in gym, and they will enjoy to lift those weights, and they will be happy and satisfied. Why? Because they see a reward. They see some kind of profit. So they're happy to do even a harder effort than it was for you to lift that stone, that, that, that boulder. You wouldn't do it. Why? Because I don't want to. That's why you suffer, because you don't want to. Not because that it's heavy. If there would be one million dollars under that boulder, you would give me with one finger like Yaakov Avinu, he moved that stone above the well. In a second, it's, not, it's nothing. That's an opposite, it's a joke. In front of a million dollars, it's a joke. So what's your problem? Why are you suffering in life? Not because that life is hard, because you don't have a purpose to life. Because that life, as they are, doesn't mean anything to you. It's against your will, that's why you suffer. You don't suffer because you need to wake up in the morning. You don't suffer because you need to work. You suffer because you don't want to do that. You don't have a purpose. Why? 
Because you're not truthful to who that you are. You're not doing what that you need to do. You're not yourself. You're working because your father-in-law, because of your wife, because of the system, because of the company, because of your boss, because of the payments, because of the, the bills, because you're afraid to deal with who that you are. And you're not strong person enough to stand and to say, hey, hey, I'm not playing anymore. I'm not doing that. You're afraid to stand up in front of your father and tell him, no, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm sorry. I will respect you and I'm not going to follow you because you're killing me. You're killing me. Your advice is killing me. It doesn't give me life. Yes, you are my father. I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to insult you. But I'm not going to follow you to hell. Maybe you call it heaven, I call it hell. I'm not following you to hell. Al ken azavi ishet avi v'imo v'davak b'ishto v'ayu lebasar echad. And that's why a man, he must leave his parents and go and be with his wife to be one person, to be one soul, to become one and to go with her and to live your life together. And now if there is some kind of separation, misunderstanding between the husband and the wife, again, it's coming from the same place that you are not honest enough to sit and to open your heart and to talk to her and to share and to explain and to spend hours on hours on explanations and long talkings into the night, opening your heart, sharing, opening, revealing your emotions, become the person that you want to be. A friend of mine told me about his difficulties with his wife, how hard it is and how she is annoying him and they're fighting all the time and he doesn't answer to her and then they're fighting. I told him, you know what's your problem? Remember where you bought those patterns, those ways of behavior that you're stuck with. Didn't you saw your father act exactly the same like you do right now? So why are you following his footsteps? If you hate him so much on how that he behaved to your mother and you're doing exactly the same to your wife right now. What was the reason of your father to behave like that? Like an animal to your mother because he was lazy? Because he was not strong and man enough, a person of truth enough to change, to take responsibility on his actions, right? So you hated him for being a liar? Great. So why are you letting yourself be like that? So why you let yourself be that liar and you're not working hard to break your nature and to become a better person? Why won't you break yourself to pieces until you're going to purify yourself completely? That you will be different. That your children will not suffer like you suffered. That your wife will not suffer like your mother suffered. That you will not suffer like your father suffered from his laziness. That's the challenge, that you will choose life. And the Yetzirah will stop you in every corner, in every opportunity, in every, every single way that he can. He will destroy, and he will stop, and he will hold you, and he will, 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 will push you down, and will break your spirit and will tell you things to push you to despair and to sadness, to feel all that you're all alone, and that you don't have no chance, and that you cannot do that, and that you're the only one, and that everyone leaves you alone, and you have no support, and you have no future, and look how many people failed, and why Hashem didn't accept his prayer, and why Hashem didn't accept my prayer, and all of the fakes and lies to shake the stability of your faith. Whatever it takes to destroy your commitment to the truth, He will do. We'll tell you, enjoy life. Go to Miami in the summer. Go to the mountains. Go to eat ice cream. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Relax. You can buy television. It won't do anything bad to you. It's okay. Take the drugs that you need, don't worry, it puts you down to sleep. Puts you down to sleep. With your iPhone and with your shows and with your YouTubes and with your whatever, Facebook and waste more hours. And I'm not telling you that you cannot, that those all of those things are bad. 
You can find diamonds in those places. You can use them for the purpose, but you need to check yourself. What's really happened to you when you use them? If you want to check the Amuna channel on YouTube, that's great. If you want to do something useful and to learn a profession, I went, last time we were in the U.S., we went to a tour in Alabama. We took an Uber driver in Alabama. He took us from the airport to the house that we were hosted in. That person, he learned ast ast astrology about the stars, all signs of the stars in the sky and the space from YouTube. The person, I'm telling you, he's a genius. He explained to me an Uber driver. And he's a genius. I'm telling you, that person explained to me things about the sky, how things are working in the sky, in heaven, in, 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 in the stars, the systems. I don't know. I don't have 1% of the information that that person contains. And I asked him, where you learned all of that? He said, I'm learning on my own. Strong, powerful person. I'm learning on my own. I open YouTube and I'm learning. And you see, the person is serious. You can find pearls and diamonds and gold in those places, but check yourself. Are you truthful to yourself? Or that you're just falling and you're letting yourself drown in those imaginations of another television series, another show, another comedy, and you waste your life. And then you go and watch some news and then some reality shows and then you lose everything, every connection. If you have a mission, if you have something and you want to take it out from there, go, no problem. Like I told you, I can go to the desert and be who that I am on my own. I won't be afraid to be over there. It's okay. Why? Because I have a purpose. And I'm ready to die while doing that purpose. I don't mind. But that other person that is going and his purpose is weak, when he's going into YouTube, when he's going into Facebook, his purpose is not solid, not clear to him. So he will drown over them. Because you're going to wander from one video to the other, from one article to the next, and he's going to lose his way. So you need to have your fingers checking your own pulse. Where are you holding in Abu Dhat Hashem? You need to check yourself. Where am I holding? Am I really desiring? Am I really doing my job? The same thing that can happen to you in YouTube can happen to you in the best Met Midrash in the world. Am I really serving Hashem Barach now while the Gemara is open in Masechet Betza in the middle of the second chapter? Am I really learning the wise words of that Tana, that holy huge Tana? Or that I'm just making other people think that I'm learning Torah all day long and I'm just, I chose that way to fake for other people that I'm on the right path and I'm learning Torah and I'm six hours every day in the Beit Midrash, faking, lying. Dover shkarim lo ikon leneged enay, Hashem is saying, a liar person cannot stand in front of my eyes, words of Hashem. No matter which amazing lie you're gonna lie to Hashem, no Hashem, me, I'm the Prince of Egypt. Me, Hashem. I'm the holy angel. I'm Mashiach. You know how many students I have that claims to be Mashiach? You can't count them on, 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 on oh, ten hands. Everybody. Everyone! Oh. Rabbi, I think I'm Mashiach. Rabbi, I thought I'm Mashiach. Rabbi, I came to that understanding. It's a days of Mashiach. And then he's saying, I'm, I'm on my way. Like, great. No problem. You go with your imagination. You can go very, very far. You know how many people think that they are Mashiach? You know how many people are so sick to think that they are Mashiach? I'm telling you that Mashiach himself will not going to know that he's Mashiach. He will put all of his effort without knowing that he's Mashiach. Because if you think that you're Mashiach, you're not Mashiach. Only if you know that you're a piece of garbage, then you can be Mashiach. Like King David said, I'm worse than a dead dog. That's what King David said on himself. Only when you hold yourself worse than a dead dog, then you can be Mashiach. Only when Moshe Rabbeinu is holding himself that he's worse than Bil'am, Rasha, that evil Bil'am, that can do the most filthiest thing in the world, and Moshe holds himself worse than him in many ways. He's got 
clear evidence for the fact that he is worse than him. Trust me, Moshe, he saw that. He saw that with healthy eyes, that he is the worst creation from all creations that Hashem made in the world. Now you can become the leader of our nation. Now you can lead the world. Now you can be Mashiach. If you think that you're holy, that you have spiritual powers, you just need to change the prescription of the, the medicine. I said that. <laughs> just okay, you know, little grams to here, little grams to there. Just, you know, play with it. You'll find the right <laughs> formula. Nonsense. Who are you to be Mashiach? You want to be Mashiach? You need to be humble. You know what it means to be humble? To know in a clear way that everyone, everyone, everyone are better than you. You can't stand your wife. You can't stand your best friend. How can you even think that you have a potential to become Mashiach? What's the connection? You can't stand your rabbi. You can't stand your parents. You can't stand yourself. You're going to be Mashiach. Mashiach is a loving creation that he loves everyone, everyone, everyone. You want to be good, so be good. You want to be kind, you want to be generous, so be. So it's hard for you to give money, so give from your time. So it's hard for you to give from your time, so give from your money. It's hard for you to give from both, okay, so give us a break. Give something. Give some quiet. <laughs> also, very precious thing in the world to have some quiet. Leave us alone. <laughs> you need to be who that you are. And that is the mission that Hashem gave you. That you will be who that you are. He designed you. He made you to be different than any other person that you know. For what? For a reason. What's the reason? Check. What's my talents? What's my abilities? What's my power? What's my wisdom? What I like to do? Why do you think that to serve Hashem must be in suffering, in a crazy way, that you're going to torture yourself and destroy yourself? Why can't it be in the best way in the world? Why can't you be who that you desire to be? Why can't you do what that Hashem made you to do? I met a person that he was a bartender and he was saving lives of people while working in the pubs at night. He was always coaching them and talking to them and giving them right advice. That was the personality of the person. I know people that smoke weeds all day long and they're amazing people. You think you can categorize and say, no, he's good, he's wrong. Oh, he's learning in yeshiva. And I saw people in yeshiva that molested children. So what? Yeshiva, which flag is it? Is it a black flag or a white flag? Which flag is it? What are you waving? I'm learning in the yeshiva. I'm a ba yeshiva bacho. What does it mean? Are you Yeresh Amayim? Are you afraid of Hashem? Do you love Hashem? Say, if you would love Hashem, you would never in the world would say, I'm a bacho yeshiva. You would say, I love Hashem. Who are you? I love Hashem. That would be your answer. No, I'm a yeshiva. I'm learning in yeshiva. Okay, fake it. You can fake it. No, what? A, who are you? Me, I'm working in high tech. I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm a stagiaire. Great, whatever, fake it. That's not you. Say I hate my morning. Say I go to sleep depressed every night. Say I'm taking drugs to, to ease the pain. I want to kill my neighbors. Say the truth. Say the truth. I'm sorry, what do you want from me? That's the truth. Who are you? Say the truth. I like jogging. I like running in the middle of the night when it's quiet. I like to hear music. I love my records. I have that scratch in my mind. I love old plastic records. That's what I like. I have a patiphone in my house. I hear music, jazz into the night. That's what I like. That's me. Okay, great. That's not me because I'm with my suitcases here in the US. I cannot take my patty from everywhere I go. But it can be you. It can be you. And you must find your true self and to understand that Hashem made you like that. 
Those curtains are not wrong because they're red and they're not blue. That deer is not wrong by being a deer and not a cow or a leopard or a cheetah or a lion. Hashem made him to be a deer and it's amazing and he doesn't need to be no other kind of animal. And you, even if you're not the tallest one and the wisest one with the best memory, that's who that you are. You don't need to have that memory. If you would have to have that memory, Hashem would put it into your mind, would install it into your system. But He didn't give you that, He gave you something else. Something else that you can use, and you should use, and you must use, and until you're going to use it, you will be sad and depressed. But when you're going to start using it, you'll be so happy. Then you're going to find yourself. You're going to find true happiness. You're going to find freedom. That's why the verse is saying, Rekaati lachem dror. The salvation is to set everyone free. Free from which chains? Everyone from his own chains that are chaining him and tying him and forcing him to his reality. It's not a reality. Those are your fears. That's your sadness. That, those are your, you, that is your lack of faith in yourself. That's your low self esteem. That's how much you're afraid from being who that you are and standing in front of everyone and saying the truth. And you know what? There is even a deeper lie that the person is saying to himself, but if I'm going to be who that I am, maybe I'm going to stop keeping Shabbat. Maybe I'm going to stop eating kosher. Maybe I'm going to stop being religious. Maybe it's not real good. I'm telling you, that you might feel like that in the beginning of your process because that you have that anger inside of you that wants to rebel, that wants to make a change. But after that you're going to dare to walk into your true self, after a few footsteps, you're going to find that you have a very strong desire to Judaism inside of you, a healthy one, one that's based on love and not based on fear. Then you're going to start keeping Shabbat with a smile on your face and you're not going to do that with fear and with stress and no, oh, and I must, and when, and how, and what, and why, and where. No, with all of those things outside of the window, in the garbage, with the rest of the waste of your life, throw it to the garbage. Now keep Shabbat out of love. Go to Hashem. Go to Hashem. Go tell him your heart. Tell him Shabbat is very, very hard for me. Hashem, I want to love you. Hashem, Shabbat is stressful for me. Hashem, I want to understand how to keep Shabbat and to keep my smile on my face. Hashem, I want to eat kosher, but I want to stay happy. Hashem, I want to do good things in my life, but I want to stay happy. Hashem, please don't destroy me. Hashem, please build me. Hashem, give me the power to do things from inside and not to fake my religion, not to fake my customs, not to fake my behaviors, my manners. If you want to be nice, be nice. Not because someone is expecting you to be nice. If you want to be generous, be generous. Not because someone tells you you need to be generous. The Torah, verse is saying Torah or the Torah is light. The Torah is shining for you the right way, not forcing you. You cannot force spirituality. You can never force spirituality. Spiritual is something that is beyond physicality. You cannot put it into no kind of vessels, no constrictions. It's spiritual. It doesn't have no boundaries, no limits. It's spiritual. It's endless. You want to have spiritual part in your life? You want to connect yourself to Hashem, to the truth? There are no, not only one way to do that. You have your way, you have your way, I have my way. She got her way. Everyone got his own individual way. And the Torah will shine to all of us how we should come closer to Hashem. And one will come back to Hashem when he will see someone wears tzitzit with ptil chelet. And he will say, wow! 
it's amazing, it's fantastic, I have to have that, what's that, tell me, where you got that, wow, in Israel, 400 shekels, in the US, $400, wow, <laughs> can you bring it to me next time you'll be in Israel, great, now you can wait, someone else will come back after learning Torah, someone else will come back after that he been in Uman, someone else will be in the Far East, will meditate, will do Vipassana for 10 days, will, will drink only water and will be quiet, and then he will have a lightning illumination, he will say, okay, I need to put filin to keep Shabbat. Where he got that from? We don't know. From inside, it woke up. I once went to a healing therapist, a woman, a secular woman in Jerusalem, in Israel. And I was talking to her once in a while when I was 18 years old, 19 years old. And when I started to do tshuva, she felt rejection. She felt that she doesn't want to support my process because she was secular. But she wanted me to develop spiritually because she had her mindset of that it's a good process, but when it took me to come closer to Hashem in ways of keeping to our mitzvot, being observant, she felt like she didn't want it. But she was still, she is a loyal person, a nice person, an amazing person. She helped me a lot. One day while she was doing those healing treatments to me, one of the treatments, she suddenly said, I don't, the truth is, and that's what she said, the truth is that I don't want to tell you what that I just saw right now. But as your therapist, I, I'm obligated to the truth, and I must tell you what I saw. I saw angels coming and putting tefillin on your head. So I told her, so now you understand why I'm doing tshuva? I didn't tell you, okay, let's see angels, let's put tefillin on. I didn't ask you for anything. You don't want me to do that, and you see that it's happening to me. You, with your eyes. I met once a very huge righteous man, a rabbi from, 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 from Bnei Brak in, in, in Israel, and he told me, you saw Eliyahu Anabi. So I told him, me? I don't remember that. He said, every Baal Tshuva saw Eliyahu Anabi. So I told him, what do you mean? He said, the first Hirur Tshuva, first thought of Tshuva of every person in the world is coming through Eliyahu Anabi. So you experienced Eliyahu Anabi in a way in your life. You did, you saw him somehow, you don't know, he was there, it was that person, he, he, and Yaw Navi can cover himself, can dress himself in, 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 in masks, in, in coverings, in people. You don't know, but you saw Yaw Navi. So you don't know who you are. Eliyahu Navi can, can, can reveal himself to you without you knowing that you already saw Yaw Navi. Angels can put feeling on your head and you don't know. You can dip in the mikveh of, 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 of Miriam and Via, and you won't know that it's the mikveh of Miriam and Via. You don't know what's going on with you at all. You don't have a clue. You can drink water from the well of Yaakov Avinu, and you don't know. You just you open your, your faucet, and then and you don't know which water Hashem put in your cup. You don't have a clue. You don't know the sparks that you just set charcoal on them. You don't know. And you must understand that that's what it means, faith. To believe that Hashem is with you, even if you cannot see. The faith is in the nights. You cannot see, but He's there. He's in your water. He's in your bread. He's in your clothing. He's in your house. He's in your books. He's, even when you watch television, you can see Hashem. Hashem is communicating through, through everything. That's what it means to believe in yourself. To listen to your inner voices and to follow your heart and to serve Hashem and not to be afraid of challenges and difficulties. Just to do as much as you can with the powers that Hashem gave you and to be loyal and truthful to yourself, to be who that you are, to be strong and positive and not to back off. To know that there is no despair in the world at all, at all. And if you're not going to give up, you will achieve all of your goals. That's 100%. That's a guarantee. That's a promise. Thank you very much. Hazakurov. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all He. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.